back to the studio, and this is the IELTS expert section. We're going to welcome back one of the few female experts of the show, Mel. Come on out. So nice to see you. And you, lovely to see you. Have a seat. Thank you. All right, thanks for coming. It's yeah, lovely to be here. We're going to have a great chat today, and we're going to start off with a short quiz, shall we? Let's do it. So the quiz is. Speaking part one is just questions about everyday things, so it's not important to practice part one too much. Is this true or is this false? Audience, what do you think? Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Ziu Ling, and currently I am a student at Hanoi Law University. Um, to uh, answer this quiz, uh, in my opinion, a part of languages is about everyday conversation. So. Uh, this statement is false. It's very important to practice part one uh, every day. All right, so uh, she thinks it's false. Mel, what do you think? I think she's 100% correct, yes. The first part of the IELTS exam is quite easy in terms of the difficulty of the question. But what you have to do is practice those questions again and again until the answers become automatic. The most common I hear is, I have been learning English since seven years, something like that. If you practice those easy answers until they become automatic, especially including different tenses, then you're going to set yourself up for a good score later. So you mentioned a really important thing uh, about having you know, speech come out as second nature, you know, have, being, being able to make it automatic. Mm -hmm. How can students do that? Um, is practice the only option? Pretty much, but what they can do is be smart about how they practice. If every single answer in part one of the test is past simple, so what students should do is prepare short answers that have a range of tenses, have, have a continuous tense, for example, even have a conditional tense, and practice those. And remember, the questions are going to be about education, where do you live, your family. So you're not preparing a huge range of topics, but you're practicing so that it is automatic, just like that. One of the questions that we get asked very often is, you know, students would complain about um, not being confident enough, or, you know, being asked topics that they're not familiar with. Um, what's your take on those questions? Well, I think it's important to remember that unfamiliar topics later on are looking for the band 7, 8, and 9 IELTS candidates. But generally speaking, you see the same topics come up again and again. It's easy to look at a textbook and identify the most popular topics. So you know if you prepare family, education, jobs, some questions about the environment, for example, and business, and so on, you've got a good chance of being able to answer most of the questions that come up. And after that, it's common sense. <laughs> That's fantastic uh, advice. So before we go to the voice of the week section, um, our audience does have a couple of questions for you. So shall we take questions from the audience? Let's do it. All right. Guys, do you have any questions? Oh, yes, we have a hand right there. So my name is Chang. Nice to meet you today. So my question is, do you have any tip for students? They take the test for three hours uh, during, uh, from reading to the writing. For without um, tiring? Well, it's a very good question, Chang, and I love the name Chang. That's my Vietnamese name. It's wow. very nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a very, very good question. And of course, three hours seems like a long time, but I can promise you it goes by in a flash. The important thing to remember is make sure you drink water. And before you start the test, it's a good idea to eat some kind of candy, something with sugar that will give you energy to keep going. Uh, but actually, once you start the test, the adrenaline will really kick in. So even if you've been nervous the night before and you haven't slept very much, actually, the, the pressure of the test will keep you going through those three hours. So just remember that, drink water, eat a little bit of candy right before the test, and you're going to be fine. Thanks for your question, Chang. Thank you. 
Does anybody else have another question? Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Khánh Duy, and uh, I'm happy to be here. And, um, and I have a question for you. Can you give me, uh, me uh, some tips uh, for reducing uh, stress um, while uh, why, uh, why we uh, deliver a presentation in front of uh, the many people or the audience? Good question. It was a good question. And again, something that a lot of people worry about. I used to have this problem myself. I used to be nervous about giving presentations. And I found a few tricks to really, really help me. Before the presentation, try to remember you have the same feeling in your stomach when you're nervous as when you're excited. So try to tell yourself this feeling in your stomach is excitement and not nerves. Just before you start to speak, take a deep breath, drop your shoulders, and think about something funny. I like to think about Mr. Bean, just for a few seconds. But when you smile, it just helps you calm down. The final piece of advice is to remember, 30 seconds into your presentation, you'll forget about being nervous, and you'll just be speaking. And finally, talk to the person in the middle of the audience. Choose one person and only talk to him or her. Don't think about anybody else. Nobody will notice that you're only talking to one person, but it will make you feel really, really calm. And I promise, after a few more presentations, you'll feel much better. Very good luck. All right, I think there's one more question. Hello, everybody. My name is Phuong, and I'm from National Economic University. I have an, uh, a question for the expert. Uh, can you give me some tips to practice writing at home without going to the IELTS center? That's a very good question, Phuong. And students often ask me about practicing writing. A good tip from me would be to get a book of IELTS questions that has an example answer at the back. Don't look at it before you start writing, but give yourself 20 minutes and think really, really carefully about putting your work in good paragraphs and well organized. At the end of 20 minutes, you can look at an example answer and see if there's anything that you could have done better. Most students don't spend a lot of time writing these days. We're all texting on our mobile phones. Uh, so you have to be sitting and practicing writing for 20 or 40 minutes at a time. That's my best advice. Very good luck. Well, we've, we've had some great questions today. We've also had the audience answer questions. And now I think it's time for the audience to be challenged mm -hmm. um, during the Voice of the Week section. And I'm super excited because I do heard that our submission today is a really good one. So shall we have a look? Let's have a look. Let's take a look at who the Voice of the Week contender is this time. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Hyam, a 22-year-old boy who comes from a peaceful village in Bagzang province. I'm currently the last year cadet of the People's Police Academy. Now, to begin my story of learning English, I started my first English lesson when I was on grade 6. But during the time at secondary school, English was all about doing grammar exercises and exams. Then I went on to become an English male learner when I attended Bakzang High School for gifted students. This is one of my best choice ever. There, my English developed more comprehensively and faster. However, after high school, life in university, especially one of the people's Amford schools system, requires me to set priority to my profession. I can only nurture my English by self-studying through the internet, but I think I need a breakthrough, and I decided 
to take the chance that the IELTS face-off gave us. I make this video to challenge myself and to prove one thing that many students at the People's Police Academy have tremendous desire for learning English. Thank you for listening to me. Goodbye. I'm so excited to see who our guest is, um, our contender here. He's from the Police Academy, and it's wonderful to be able to see somebody, um, you know, within that that profession to come here and speak to us. So, Hib, where are you? Let's go. Get into the studio. All right. Now, Hib, take your seats. So let's start with part one, Hip. So what's your favorite season? Uh, it must be summer. Because I am a student and I still have summer holiday. And also because uh, I am an energetic boy and summer, you know, is ideal for outdoor activities. So now for part two, I'm going to give you a card. You're going to look at it for one minute and you can make some notes. After that, you're going to talk for two minutes. Yeah. Are you ready? Ready. Great. And begin. Yes. Um, so today, I'm going to tell you about the day that I had to wait for six years. Yeah, it was my debut match for my hometown football team uh, in an annual local competition uh, on Ted holiday of 2012. Um, although I was always considered as an outstanding player at my age, I could only join the squad and uh, put on the team's uniform until I was 15 years old. According to the competition's rules, uh, we weren't able to uh, create our own clothes. We used the uniform of Chelsea Football Club, which we bought in a nearby sportwear store as our kit. I started the match at the striker's position and wore number nine. The fans were excited and curious about the player. Uh, it was the moment of happiness, pride, and anxiety to me. And at that time, I told myself that, come on here, just uh, play for the logo on your chest and they will remember the name on your back. And in the end, I backed two dramatic goals to uh, help my team earn three points in the sensational opening game. Uh, the stadium submerged in uh, Great Mary. The supporters hailed my name, and I knew that my performance had lived up to their expectation. That's all about my story. <laughs> that was a very interesting story. Thank you very much. So now we're going to move on to part three and talk a little bit more about clothes. Does personality affect how people choose what to wear? Mm, my answer is 100% yes. Uh, I believe that your fashion style can tell who you are. For example, those creative and dynamic often choose a combination of uh, diverse colors in their clothing style, and they are commonly fashionistas. Uh, on the other hand, those who often wear plain clothes tend to have a quiet disposition, and they are willing to put on anything that they can find in their wardrobe. Thank you. That's the end of the speaking test. Thank you. Thank you, Mel. Thank you, Hib. Uh, go ahead and stand there. Um, are you excited to know what the audience think yes. of your performance? I'm looking for it. All right. So, audience, it's time for you to vote for the score, the band score that you think Hib has gotten. It's your time to vote starting now. You have one minute. All right, everyone, the results are in. Are you excited for it? All right, well, this is what the audience thinks. 16% think your band score is from a six to a 6.5. 6.5% 6 
16, another 16% think your band scores from 6.5 to a 7.0. 11% think the band score is from 7.0 to 7.5. And 50% of, of our audience actually think you got above a 7.5. So congratulations. Let's now talk to Mel and see what she thinks. Mel, so what are some of the things that Hip can do better and what are some of the things that he did well? Mm -hmm. Well, I thought that Hip will score fairly well in terms of answering the question. Um, your vocabulary was really strong, lexical resource. It was a nice mix of using slightly less common phrases but not going overboard with the idioms. I was quite impressed with that. Um, some areas to work on, I think, would probably be word stress and pronunciation. There were a few words that could have been clearer. For example, localities. Localities, the stress was in the wrong place. So small things like that, I think, would give you a slightly higher band score. Yes, thank you. All right, well, here, you know, great job today. And of course, you won't come here for nothing. We do have a gift for you. Gift, where are you? <laughs> this is Tracy. Thank you, Tracy. And Mel, what did you do? I would be honored. Congratulations, Mr. Pierre. Okay. Well, guys, you know, if you are looking to participate in the IELTS Voice of the Week section, you can always send us your videos and you will definitely get a prize. You might be able to come onto the show and we do have a winner for the Voice of the Year section. And the winner of the Voice of the Year will actually get a really, really fantastic trip overseas for one week, right? And we're gonna have two winners at the end of the year. One is online and one is actually in the studio. So either winner is gonna go to the UK or Australia. So stay tuned and keep participating. And of course, thanks so much, Mel, for being on the show and thank you for all of your advice. Thank you very much for inviting me. I've had a lovely time. Thank you. Episode, you're gonna get a glimpse of what it's like to be in actual Australia, all right? So Australia, here we come in Study Australia 101. Hi, you're watching the very first ever episode of Oz 101, and I'm your host, Michael Liu. Now, what do we have today? It seems like we have a big black straw ball or sphere of some kind. I expected your creative judgment to be better than that. This is actually a beautifully crafted uh, sculpture in the shape of a globe because it stands for what this university represents. It is Australia's global university, the University of New South Wales. Now, how has the uni achieved this status? Why don't we take a look at the following video? So that video actually looked all well and good, but is the experience of an international student at the University of New South Wales actually like that? There's only one way to find out, and today I have the help of Rizzi, who is a third year commerce student at this university. So let's uh, check out what she's got to say. First off, um, what made you, what motivated you to uh, join UNSW, to pick this as your academic home? Well. I had to throw a little bit back 
uh, in 2015 when I first met the representative of the UNSW. They were so friendly and professional. So I think that it's something, you know, about the ranking the top 50 university in the world. So I do the virtual tour. It's actually the app application mm -hmm. or the website so that you can right. actually um, go on the website and then you actually walk in the university and hear the description about the places. And I think the university really updates the technology and also um, the knowledge of the world. So I think it's great. Keeping updated with the most current technologies and solving global issues are at the core of UNSW's research philosophy. Oh yeah, I've got the whole Breaking Bad look on, but it actually is not for posing purposes, it is actually for safety reasons as I'm standing in one of the most advanced research facilities at a university uh, in Australia. Now, UNSW is ranked um, fourth nationally and first in the state uh, for its research facilities as well as research work. And um, as you can see around me, it is clearly reflected in all of the equipment, all of the devices, all of the machinery in the area. How cool, right? reason why I choose UNSW because it's not only the, in the top five university in Australia but it's also leading in engineering. UNSW provide me with a lot of facility especially in chemicals engineering building. What I like about my supervisor is um, she guide me throughout the process because she is an expert in her projects. She actually has a lot of paper and she's also worked with some Vietnamese students before in Vietnam. So through that, like from her, I can learn a lot. Moving on to another field of science, we meet a Vietnamese celebrity scientist who has discovered 23 new bacterial species. His passion for microbiology won him four PhD scholarships to four top universities in Australia. He chose to settle for UNSW to follow microbiology. The university has been a lot of help. I mean, obviously, aside from the uh, scholarship that I got from the university, which of course has supported me financially, I have a lot of colleagues, both um, inside and outside of my lab group, who are very, very knowledgeable about a very wide range of, um, of topics. They're so forthcoming with um, all their information and all the help. Mm -hmm. that, that makes life so much easier. Our next stop is the UNSW Business School. This is one of the Asia-Pacific region's leading business education institutions. This section of the uni is all about arming students with the latest knowledge and practical experience with the business world. The business school has just installed an iLab for finance students just like me. Bloomberg or FactSet or something like that. I can access it for free and doing the real investment. I can apply what I have learned in the, in the lecture to the real life situations, such as I can meet the other ventures and then I'm dealing the sponsorship with them. Entrepreneurial minds like Fook can bring their business ideas to life by participating in the faculty's startup competitions and challenges. Over 60 years of nurturing many generations of businessmen and entrepreneurs means a UNSW business student will, upon graduation, join a network of more than 90,000 alumni worldwide. No wonder why UNSW 
is recognised as the Australian University with the strongest links to industry. A lot of students who want to come to Australia don't just want to gain a, a world-class education, but they also mm -hmm. want to go here absolutely. for a social life yeah, absolutely. as well. So can you uh, share with us what the social life is like here? Well, it's really dynamic. It really depends on your characteristics. You have a lot of opportunity to open your network and also to have memorable experiences. For the Vietnamese, they also have the Society for the Vietnamese International Students. The aim of this club is creating a playground, a network place for Vietnamese international students, of course, at UNSW, and especially a chance for them to get uh, better knowledge and also um, learning from each other. Alright global citizens, we hope that this journey of ours has uh, shown you enough knowledge, experience and insight on what UNSW is like. So if you think that you've found your academic home, don't shy away from signing up. And that's it for our journey for today on Oz 101. Right now let's beam you right back to the studio. <laughs> Well, that was an interesting video. I never thought that being in such a big university can be so enriching and so much fun. Now, if you are considering whether to go abroad to study or to stay in Vietnam to pursue your dreams, um, I do think that these are all really important decisions and you're at the crossroad of your life where you have to be fully informed to make the right decisions for you. I do think that a lot of the times it's not really about you selecting the opportunity, but it's really about the opportunity selecting you. So hopefully within the show today, we hope that you've been inspired to realize and observe the different ways in which people make decisions and how different people's lives can be, you know, based on the decisions that they make. And of course, we always hope for you to make that decision to join the show and to be with us every week, twice a week, and we're going to see you again next Wednesday at 9 p.m. exclusively on VTV7. Ciao, ciao, take care.